So I recently bought this Huanan X79 motherboard off of AliExpress. You can find them for about $120 brand new and they're, they're pretty impressive for what they get you. And it came in this box, it's pretty nice. Um, of course the motherboard's out of the box now, but it's got, it had a lot of bubble wrap. It came in an ESD bag. It came with some thermal paste, some mounting hardware, the manual, the disc. Pretty basic. It came really well wrapped. I'll, I'll show you a picture of that. So here's the motherboard in my system. Um, it actually has four dim slots. So that's pretty good. And they do work in quad channel. I'm not sure if this is the actual genuine X79 chipset. I'm not sure, but it does work in quad channel. They push it through the memory controller on the processor, which my processor, I chose the Xeon E5 1650V2. It's, it's pretty good for gaming. It's about the same performance as a Ryzen 5 1600, and I can show you that in benchmarks later. And it's got my RX 588 gig in here. It's got three PCI Express slots. I know the top one's wired uh, 16X. I'm pretty sure these are 8X. And you can see here, this is a full M.2 NVMe compatible uh, slot for an SSD. Um, it does work in the BIOS. There is M.2 configuration. That is actually a light for the postcode. There's the integrated audio, there's serial ports, fan headers, USB, there's a USB 3.0 for the front header. Um, one thing that was a little weird, this was short for my ATX case, and I checked this in another one. It, it claims to be ATX form factor, but it misses these screws right here. But it's, it's still sturdy enough. It's pretty good. It's got uh, six SATA connectors. Now, I believe these... Four, there's four here, are um, SATA 2, 3 gigabit, so I just have my hard drives and my uh, CD drive hooked up to that. And then this orange, there's two right here, this is SATA 6 gigabit. As you can see in the top left hand corner, this is the 8-pin uh, EPS connector. It claims to have a 7-phase VRM, and through my mild overclocking, yes this board does overclock, I haven't had any crashes or any problems with it. This is, it's all metal. Even the top part that looks kind of plasticky, that's that's a metal finish. It's all thermally conductive. It, it keeps it pretty cool. I mean, for this cheap Chinese board, it works pretty well. Now, the downside here though, there's only three total fan headers. There's a CPU fan, one system fan, and then one more system fan at the bottom right there. So I would recommend if you have a lot of fans, make sure that you either got Molex with your power supply or you have a fan hub. And the IO is pretty basic. You got your two PS2 ports, your four USB 2.0, four USB 3.0. I believe that is 100 megabit ethernet. I haven't been able to check. It might be gigabit, but just bank on it being 100 megabit because this is a pretty cheap motherboard. Um, and all the generic audio ports you would ever want. Not bad. Now this motherboard does claim to have all solid capacitors. It claims to have an eight layer PCB, which just means it's not flimsy, it's pretty solid. And it fully supports all Intel Xeon um, V1 and V2 chips on the LGA 2011 socket. So even your eight cores, if you want to get into some kind of productivity, which the VRM could definitely handle. So we're in the BIOS. It's just a generic American Megatrends BIOS. Pretty basic, but pretty good. It's got everything you could need. It, see, it's got NVMe configuration. Now, I don't have anything plugged in, but um, really the main thing that we're gonna focus on though is the overclocking. So the overclocking is under the advanced tab, CPU configuration, all the way down to CPU power management configuration. Now, if you're overclocking, I, re I recommend copying all this stuff up here. Now, down here, you can actually alter the power limit. I would not do that personally. I don't think pushing more watts through your VRM is a good idea. Um, all I would do is just go down here and modify your core ratio limit. Now, sadly, you actually cannot change your processor's voltage in this BIOS. Now, there are modded Russian BIOSes that you can download, but that would risk bricking your motherboard. I'm just in it for mild overclocking. So I went up on my 1650V2 to 3.9 gigahertz. I did have it stable at four, but I just took it back down to 3.9 because I don't need to push it that much more. It's performing pretty well. So quickly on user benchmark, which is just a repository for thousands of different computer benchmarks, here is the processor that I chose on the Swanon X79 motherboard and the 
relatively recent Ryzen 5 1600. Now the Ryzen 5 1600 does beat out this processor in almost everything, in single core, quad core, multi-core, but only barely within 3% margin, 5% margin, and this is just at its stock rated speed. So just getting a little bit of an overclock, like my 3.9 gigahertz, will get it to equal or slightly surpass it in almost all of this criteria. So here we are in CPU-Z. You can see my um, 3.9 gigahertz overclock did happen. I can show you with a stress test later. The memory is running in quad channel, and here's the timings, 11, 11, 11, 28, not bad. So I just ran a memory and cache benchmark. As you can see, this is in quad channel. Um, the memory does support ECC, by the way. I don't know if I went over that. I am using ECC um, registered modules. The bandwidth is nearly identical to DDR4, 3200 megahertz running in dual channel, which is pretty good this is 1600 megahertz running in quad channel so you can save yourself a lot of money on RAM with this. So we're finishing up our Cinebench run let's see what we get. 1041. So we've been running Ida 64 for almost 10 minutes now you can see we're still maintaining our 3.9 gigahertz we are just under 60 degrees on my Arctic Freezer 13 air cooler. It's designed to handle a TDP of 130 watts, so it does handle this pretty well. No crashes, nothing wrong. We're still alive, nice and stable. Looking pretty good. So I'm just going to do a quick little test in Overwatch to show you the uh, CPU performance. We're at the uh, 1080p high preset with a frame rate cap of 300 FPS. I do think my RX 580 can handle this. It's more down to the processor, churning out hundreds of frames a second. So let's see how it does. So immediately jumping into the game, we're, uh, we're at 270 frames a second or so, a little over 200. It's, it's doing pretty well. I'll get into something busy and let's see how it goes. So we're in a little team fight. I think it's safe to say this can definitely handle 144 hertz esports titles. So in conclusion, would I recommend this motherboard? Well, it's definitely the best Chinese motherboard that I've seen. Um, if you're trying to put together a cheap rendering workstation and you want like eight cores and you want 64 gigs of RAM on the cheap, I'd definitely go this route. If you're a gamer, it's a little bit of a harder sell because you don't necessarily need tons of uh, ECC RAM and quad channel. But if you do find a good deal on a processor or a lot of RAM, I would still recommend this platform.